Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about the cosmic microwave background, the, the so-called decoupled photons. Uh, uh, photon decoupling and form the cosmic microwave background, and uh, and and later on we in the lecture we're also going to talk about uh, decoupled neutrino background. Uh, in the early universe, after nucleosynthesis contained a plasma of photons and charged matters, coupled by their mutual electromagnetic interactions, you know, like the helium and hydrogen, they are charged, they are, they are, ion, they are ions, they are not. Uh, as the universe expands and cools, baryon matter, ions, and the, uh, electrons congeal into neutral atoms. So the cosmic soup lost its ability to entrap photons because they are neutral particles. So the cross-section of photon uh, is, uh, is factor goes to zero. Uh, these free thermal photons having black body spectrum survive today as a cosmic background uh, <coughs> radiation as we see today. Uh, this, this, their discovery gave strong support to the hot Big Bang theory of cosmology. And uh, it's difficult to think of any other alternative to account for the existence of such physical phenomena of, uh, on a cosmic scale. So now, with how the universe become transparent of photons? The epoch when the charge uh, nuclear ions and the electron combine to form neutral atoms. It's called the photon decoupling time. So we indicate the time was subsequent. Whenever we have subsequent gamma, we should remember this photon decoupling uh, epoch. See, the, the dominant uh, reaction was reversible. Electron combines a proton to a hydrogen atom, and uh, plus the gamma. But it can also, if you have strong enough uh, photon, they can photo dissociate the hydrogen atom to, to break up into electrons and, and a proton. So if the uh, uh, the photons is not enough energy to go from right to left, and uh, <coughs> so that was be the photon decoupling time because all the charge go into neutral atoms. Then the thermal energy of the photon drop below the threshold required to ionize the newly formed atoms. So all the charged electrons ions were swept up and bound themselves into neutral atoms. Okay. Uh, in the literature, this photon decoupling time is also ref called the recombination time. The name has been used because the analogous situation in the interstellar plasma where such atoms atomic formation is indeed a recombination. But up to this point, actually, photon decoupling time, uh, ions and electrons had never been combined before. So, so the, the, the name recombination is a little bit misleading. Well, we next expect the thermal energy uh, at the decoupling time uh, to have an energy that's comparable to a typical atomic binding energy on the order of electron volts. In fact, detailed calculation shows that the, uh, the thermal energy at the coupling time is about 0.26 electron volt, and uh, and this ratio factor of uh, uh, 1100. So, if you knowing the th uh, kT is good, is divide by Boltzmann constant tells you the temperature. It's about 3,000 Kelvin. And uh, remember we said the average uh, photon energy for the obey black body spectrum is 2.7 uh, kT. And so if we plug the K 2.6 electron volts, this gives you about 0.7 electron volt. So the average photon energy at the couple time is about uh, 0.7 electron volt. Now, knowing the, uh, the, the ratio, of, which can be uh, translated means that the scale factor about uh, 1,000. Okay. So, 
so therefore, at the coming, the universe is about a thousand times smaller in, in term in linear dimensions, but it's really because radiation goes like ten, eight to the minus four is trillion times denser on the average than today. After the cosmic time uh, decoupling time, the decoupled photon would travel freely through the universe, but they kept the black body spectrum, remember the uh, whole shape are unchanged as the universe expands. Those photons cooled according to scaling law, the temperature scales like 1 over A. Thus, the Big Bang cosmology projects everywhere in the present universe, there should be a sea of primordial photons following a black body spectrum. So what should the temperature be now? We can estimate uh, if the, at the coupling time of 3000 K and was uh, uh, ratio factor 1100, and since temperature scales are 1 over A, so therefore the present temperature should compare to should be the scale factor, the decoupling time times uh, the temperature at decoupling time. So uh, 3000 minus uh, 1100 give it 2.k, 2.7k. So so we get roughly about 3 degree above absolute zero uh, radiation temperature. Now, if you know that this temperature, and you, look to, you know you're supposed to obey the black body spectrum, then the you know it's maximum intensity. It was most likely the most of the uh, the photons as at the uh, of the wavelength that's uh, given by so called the wind displacement constant. You know, the maximum wavelength, the, the, the intensity at the maximum intensity of the wavelength times the, the temperature should be this. 2 nines centimeter times k. And so therefore you can work out 2.7 k implies a thermal spectrum of uh, uh, that's maximized at around uh, a wavelength about one millimeter. So in other words, the regular, the regular background radiation is in the microwave range. Okay. That's what we call cosmic microwave background. So when this recombination time took place, uh, we know the universe has been matter dominated since the recombination time. Hence, the time dependent scale factor to be for a flat uh, matter dominant universe goes like t time to the uh, two third power. Uh, as we shall discuss below, the, the universe ceased to be radiation dominant way, way before the recombination time. And also, there's a possibility of accelerating due to dark energy. That's only because only recently, so we can ignore that, these factors. So anyway, if A goes like T to the uh, two thirds, so therefore you have this relation. The scale factor now compared with the scale factor at decoupling time should be a two third power of the ratio of the uh, the time now versus the decoupling time. A now, of course, is one, and uh, uh, so so therefore uh, one over A is equal to uh, one plus. So therefore, this can be this scale can be traded by this uh, the uh, 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 ratio factor of the Z not equal to zero. Okay. And also T not the the age of the universe now T not is about fourteen. Very close to Hubble time, about 14 giga years. And so you can, from this, you can either calculate the decoupling time is the uh, 1100 to the power of minus 2 times 10 to the uh, 14 giga years, come out to be uh, 3800,000 years. So, in summary, the photon in the early universe were tightly bound with ionized matter, special electrons, through the Thompson scanning. Such interaction stopped around redshift about uh, 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 redshift 1100, when the universe had cooled sufficiently to form neutral atom, mostly hydrogen. Ever since this last scanning time, the photon has traveled freely through the universe and redshift to a microwave frequency as the universe expanded. 
this primordial light should appear today as cosmic microwave background thermal radiation with a temperature about 3 degrees. So let's end this first part of chapter of this uh, lecture 26.